Hi guys, welcome back to Growing in the Cove. This morning I'm in my basement and I'm taking a look at all of my seeds that I've already started and I wanted to give you some updates and also talk about a little bit of troubleshooting. Every year when I start seeds, now this is only my second season really growing, I always learn something every year and I have a little bit of troubleshooting specifically with my heat map. Now, onions. I wanna do an update. So I did an onion planting video, onion seed planting, and I planted leeks, shallots, and white onions. These are my shallots, which are doing really, really, really good. I'm still getting some germinating. Um, yeah, these are doing really well. So I'm really pleased with these. These will continue growing for the next couple of months until I can put them out in the garden. So I really have no qualms. This is normal to have this kind of leggy looking growth. And when they get a little bit bigger, I'm actually gonna give them a little haircut to just encourage them to bulk up a little more. My other tray that I planted of leeks and white onion. These are my leeks, which came up okay. This is my white onion. I have two seeds, so or two sprouts or seedlings. So one thing about onion seeds is they are not viable for very long. So I purchased these onion seeds around Christmas, but I'm thinking that I may have gotten last year's seeds. Onion seeds are good for usually about a year and then after that, they're not viable anymore. So I took a chance and I kind of learned this the hard way that these seeds were toast. My leeks, however, have come up pretty good. I really overseeded this whole tray um, and you know, maybe some of the seeds migrated to one area, but one thing I am noticing is that the middle of my tray did not germinate, which means that I think my heat mat that I had these on uh, gets too hot, especially in the middle of the soil. So I'm gonna troubleshoot maybe either having the seed mat on for 12 hours, off for 12 hours, but I've also seen suggestions of people putting them up on like a cooling rack, like do I have some over there, but like like a baking cooling rack that you would put cookies on to lay that on top of the heat mat and then lay this just above. So I'm gonna try with my next things that I have to germinate with heat. I'm going to play around with that because I think I would have got better results if I had just not left the heat mat going 24 hours a day. Um, the other thing with onions is that they can take anywhere from seven to 10 days to germinate. My shallots germinated within a few days, but uh, my leeks took almost a full 10 days. So don't lose hope. But for me, it has now been a full two weeks uh possibly longer for my white onions so i don't think they're gonna come up the good thing is if you don't have success with seeds it's still early i could still purchase more white onion seeds and try again um but to be honest i'm probably just gonna buy some bulbs and plant those uh like i did last year i had really good results with those so you know this is the reality of gardening there's a lot of trial and error and uh, I really can't blame that on on me because everything else did come up so I don't think I can blame my skill I think I'm gonna blame the seeds this time I'll give you another example I also on my seed mat started some celery now you will see I got really good germination in these two cells and not so good germination in these cells these were closer to the center of the heat mat. So again, I've got some troubleshooting. However, I have enough seedlings in here for all the celery that I'm going to need. So I'm still happy with this. This is why I like to over sow more than I'm going to need because at least then I know 
you know, I have, I'm not going to need more than 30 celery plants. So I've got those there. But again, I'm noticing a trend here that my seed mat uh, might be causing me some issues. I started some kale a little while ago um, because I want to get some kale maybe out in my greenhouse. Um, I kind of regretted not transplanting my kale into my greenhouse from last summer and overwintered it. So because kale is so cold hardy, I decided to start some. So this is um, red Russian uh, kale. I planted two seeds in each cell and almost all of them have two plants per cell, except this one just got one and this one just got one. But I'm really happy with those. If you think about how big a kale plant gets, mine got about this wide and really tall. I mean, you're not gonna need any more than this for the average garden. This will give me enough kale for probably all season. Uh, but I'm also growing another type too, the dino kale, so that's fine. And this is my most successful tray. So I decided to do an experiment to see if I could grow some lettuce downstairs. Um, I'm really tired of crappy grocery store greens that have come in from California. And by the time they get here, they're half rotten. So I decided to do two types of lettuce. This is actually, an, oh, sorry. This is actually an old spinach tray. So keep all of your trays. Look at the root system on these. That's amazing. So this is another exercise in seed viability. So on this side, this is butter crunch lettuce, which I planted last year. Um, I purchased these seeds last year and this just shows how quickly germination rates drop off. So I equally seeded both sides of the tray. This was fresh seed and this was last year's seed. And you can see that I got, um, you know, still good germination rate, probably 70%, but a definite difference as opposed to on this side, this is fresh lettuce seeds. So, you know, I've definitely learned that I probably want to be, some of my things I want to be buying fresh every year because it really does make a difference. So this is Butter Crunch and it's doing great. I'm starting to get some true leaves. And this is called a uh, Ruby Salad Bowl. This is a very popular uh, lettuce type and these are really good in cold weather. Usually anytime you have greens with red leaves, they're more hardy to the cold. So I'm going to do an experiment in probably potting these up. I'm gonna keep some down here in the basement, continue to grow, and I'm gonna try uh, in a little in a little while to put some out in my greenhouse as well. Anyway, I just wanted to do a little seedling update and show you how I'm doing with everything. It's so exciting to have things growing again. I have really missed this. And it's nice to start some things early because it gives you something to do and uh, it gets a little overwhelming when you have all of your seeds started at one time. I think I started mine at the end of April last year and I had, this basement was full. It was like a jungle. So basically, yeah, I'm just kind of picking away at it and uh, hoping for the best. Uh, let me know what you're starting. If you have started onion seeds, let me know how they're doing. Like I said, I had good success with my shallots and leeks. My onions, mm, I think my seeds were uh, toast. But anyway, keep me posted on how you're doing and I will keep you posted. I think I'm going to plant some foxgloves and get those started for the spring. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.